Okay, we're looking at the trial and conviction of Hans Nelson Halga. Halga preached no new doctrine. He did not even attempt to organize his, fel his followers into a new religious body, but contented himself with preaching the gospel according to the confession of the Lutheran state church. But this was regarded as a crime, since no one but ordained ministers were authorized to preach. Under the Conventicle Act of 1741, Hag was prosecuted by the state officials and the clergy of the state church. He was repeatedly arrested and had to spend a large part of his life in prison. In 1804 he was transported in chains to Christiana, where he remained incarcerated till 1814. In 1808, when the Council of Regency found great difficulty in securing provisions and supplies because of the blockade, and great anxiety was felt because of the shortage of salt. Hauger offered to erect salt works which could produce salt from seawater. If they would liberate him, they accepted the offer and Hauger built several salt works which supplied the country with that necessary commodity. But as soon as he had accomplished this, he was remanded to prison to wait his final trial. Not till after he had spent ten years in, in the prison cell did the court see fit to render its decision by which he was adjudged guilty of the following offences. a. That contrary to the ordinance of 1741 he had travelled about the country and preached the word of God. b that he had encouraged others to do so, to do the same. C. That he had inv used invectives against the clergy, which were not considered to emanate from ill will, and which, when taken in their proper connection, did not seem as offensive as when they were torn out of their connection. The judges paid no attention to the fact that Hauger had already spent a decade in prison without being convicted of any wrongdoing. They decided that he ought to pay a fine of 1,000 Riksdaler and the cost of the trial. But this considerable son exhausted his scant means. He left the prison penniless and broken in health, physically unable to resume his great religious work which he had so unselfishly performed. His adherents, the Haugiena, who were now numbered by the thousands all over the country, bought him a small farm in the neighborhood of Christiana, where he resided until his death in 1824. Hauger lived, however, to see the fruits of his labor. The revival which he had set on foot caused a great awakening, which for the first time made the Christian faith a dominant force in the people's spiritual life. He roused them, even socially, to greater diligence and earnestness, and imbued them with an ardent desire to manage their own local affairs, as they had learned to govern themselves in religious matters. The nation's conscience had been awakened, and before Hauger was liberated from prison, some of the more fair-minded among the clergy began to call attention to the beneficial effects of his work. In 1812, Klaus Pavels wrote in his diary, I believe that Hans Hauger has done much more good than harm in Norway. His apostolic itinerancy, his foolish writings, his followers, and partly also his own fanatic conduct is no longer seen but that he has founded a sect which still exists, the members of which distinguish themselves by piety, virtue, good order, diligence, and peacefulness. In short, nearly everything which constitutes civic virtue and tends to strengthen society, none but the most biased can deny. Hallelujah. So we see a testimony that despite his suffering, God used him to establish a work which has effects even to this day.
Let us pray that once more Yahuwah will move in Norway and bring about an, an awakening and a transformation of the society. In Jesus' name, Amen.